So, Gaurav, do you want to kick us in or, or I can I can start? Uh, I think you can start. Okay, perfect. So, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, good to see, uh, see you all. And um, let me first give a quick introduction of myself. So, my name is Amit Gautam. I am currently, I, I work for a management consulting firm. And... I, um, I work in the area of mergers and acquisition. So um, anytime you see any deal happening, you know, companies require some sort of consulting support. You know, I provide them consulting support, um, not related to the area that you, you all are kind of focused on. Um, brief background, I have been doing management consulting for the last 11 years. And, um, before that, I worked for Johnson and Johnson. I was uh, I worked for uh, sales and marketing for three years. Done my um, engineering MBA. So that is my quick background. Uh, why I am here is uh, over the course of my career, um, I have taken multiple interviews. I have um, I have been involved in you know I have been panelist for on interviews. I myself have given interviews. Um, you know, obviously for my MBA and all, I have also gone through GD, but I'll, I'll try to focus on interviews. So I would, I would like to share um, tips and what I as an interviewer look into when I am interviewing. Okay. And this, you will probably will need to translate some of this into uh, the kind of college interview that you will be facing. But a lot of this are universal and will apply for you as well. Okay. So before I get started, uh, I know this is a small group. So I, I do want to see if you have any kind of any top of mind questions. And I would try to focus. I would try to address them during my initial kind of pointers that I'm going to share. And my idea is that for the first, say, 20, 25 minutes, I would try to share with you what I have seen um, and, and what I look into a candidate, what are kind of no-goes and, you know, what, uh, what gets a candidate through. So I would try to share that. And then we can open up for your questions, okay? But before that, any, any immediate top of mind questions, thoughts you have? Anyone? And, and, and guys, no question is a wrong question, okay? So feel free. Anyone? I think, I think you all are well prepared. <laughs> we, should, we should just start doing interviews. Um, no worries. Okay, so let's do this. I will. I will start sharing thoughts on um, on interview. Okay, if you have questions, even in between, you know, feel free to ask those questions. Okay, let's try to not keep this as a monologue. Let's try to have this as a discussion. Okay, that is what will help you. Okay, you you can read about all of this on on internet, and you can right, but um, try to. Try to clarify the doubts you may have. Okay. Okay. So, interview. Okay. Let's think about why someone takes an interview. Okay. There, there could be two things. Primarily, if I divide, there are two, two major aspects. Okay. One is through interview, someone is trying to understand what are your technical skills. Okay. If I am going to hire a Java script writer, I want to make sure that that person understands Java. Okay. I would ask that person all questions related to Java architecture and all of that. Okay. That is called a technical interview. Okay. The other kind of interview is more, I would say, soft skills, people related interview, where I'm trying to understand that, okay, I have already. You know, you have already cleared your um, 
examination, you have already given a written exam. So I know that your analytical skills, whatever other skills I am looking for is there. I want to make sure that as a person, okay, there are a few traits that you possess, which I value or, or my organization values. Okay. And those can be very different if you are applying in an for an army role, it could be very different. If you're applying for a job, for a technical job, it will be very different. I interview candidates who already have done their MBA from premium B schools, right? So I don't, I don't ask them basic questions on profit loss or something, right? I try to see that if, if that person has to go in front of a, of a client, will I, as their manager, be comfortable with that? Right? So that is what I am trying to judge. Okay, how confident is someone? How articulate is uh, is, is a candidate? Okay, so that is one. Okay, so so what I understand your your college admissions. This is you you would have already taken some sort of a written examination. So they would obviously be asking you technical questions, some to basically understand if you have done say economics, right? If you have done um, your studies in sciences, right? They may ask you questions just to see that, you know, do you have basic understanding and how um, how well you understand your subject, okay? Even if I don't understand economics, I can always ask a question like, um, what are your views on the current inflation in India? Okay, now you should, if, if you have done your economic studies, you should be able to, answer it, you should be able to um, provide your point of view, okay? But through that question, I am not trying to understand that, do you know all the graphs, all the curvatures, everything. I am trying to see that how confident you are, how, how, do you, how do you answer when a question comes to you, okay? So um, any, any, any question on this? I'll, I'll, I'll keep taking pauses. If you have any question on whatever I'm saying, ask that question, okay? All good? Okay. So, so I, what, what I have done is I have divided an interview in three parts, okay? So first part is your introduction, okay? Your, um, you know, you are introducing yourself, you are getting into the room, how well dressed you are, all of those things that I would, I would categorize it as introduction, okay? The second, I would say, part is main body of the interview, where you know 20, 25 minutes questions are being asked, the panel is asking you questions. You are in a flow, you are giving answers, how well you are answering, that all kind of falls into that um, middle 20, 25 minutes, okay? And lastly, the how do you close an interview, okay? Is that close, an abrupt close, or is there, um, you know, how, did you ask the right question or, or how did you close the interview? So those are the three buckets I would broadly categorize an interview, okay? So now I, I'll start with the first part, introduction. And on that, I would say that there are a few things which kind of ticks me off um, when I am taking an interview. So for example, if a candidate comes in and that candidate, you know, he or she, does not have their phone on silent. Okay, I'm taking an interview and the phone rings. Okay, kind of just tells me that you are not, you know, you are not um, sincere enough. You are not, uh, or, or you have not given full thought. You are not present in the moment. Okay, small thing. But I want to make sure that you are dressed appropriately. Okay, you are, you, you are looking, you know, um, kind of very professional. Obviously I'm taking for a professional organization. So you are, you are, you know, wearing a, a suit. I mean, in consulting, that is what you wear. So those kind of things are, are taken care of. So I would say these things are basic hygiene. Okay. You should take care. And, and this is the easiest thing you don't have to do. I mean, this is not that you, you need to prepare something for any interview, get to the interview, you know, 15 minutes beforehand. You should not be late for an interview. That is such a um, such a bad start. If the interviewer of the panel is waiting for you and you are not present, it's a very bad start. So punctuality, dressing up well, 
be ready in the moment you know your phones are switched off you are kind of your attention is to the interview those are um i would say hygiene factors so so take care of that okay now getting to the introduction when once you are once you enter the interview hall the panelists are there um the first is generally i mean i i work with uh, with us clients and there is something which is called small talk okay so small talk is what i was trying to do when we started this call okay i was trying to just ask you guys that how are you guys doing you know this is late in night um you know when when i am talking to say someone in new york right i would just ask them that um you know how is the weather you know this it is early march so it must be getting nice i know it's very cold and fair and i heard that you know there was big snowfall without even knowing that person i'm trying to connect okay uh so that is called small talk okay i i'm not saying that you always have to do small talk but if some of you are comfortable doing it right if some of you are kind of uh, have that personality that you can talk to someone you can engage with someone do that uh for example if if your interview is say late in the day you can always say that um you know uh, it seems like you know you had a long day how have how has your day been okay you are trying to empathize with that person you, it just gives you a connect even before the interview starts you are very well connected and um, um you know if if your interview is first in the day you know just saying that it's a bright sunny day you know, you know it's, it's just just try to build that connect but obviously it should not come across as something as which is uh, which is forced okay some of you will get it naturally if you get it naturally do it okay so i would call it small talk okay the second is the second question they generally that i ask a candidate is introduce yourself okay so when i started uh, this call i gave like a 30 second introduction because that is what and and i try to tell you that why i am here right so introduction should be very specific okay it could be a 30 second generally um so if i am taking an interview i would i would ask the candidate that can you give me a 2 minute introduction and based on what i hear i would ask you questions okay so prepare two versions of your introduction okay one is like a very short 30 second and one is a longer 2 minute 2 to 2 and a half minute introduction depending on how the interview is going on what and what is being asked you should be able to juggle between those two okay don't don't bore people with your introduction okay so try to see try to keep your audience engaged okay so for example if you are if you have started on you know talking about something and the audience is not engaged you should be able to grasp it okay and and that is why i try to keep the introduction short and i tell them that okay i'm going to give my introduction let me know if there is any specific area where you would you would like to focus right so for example if someone has say i am taking an interview for mna mergers and acquisition if someone has worked in say investment banking i would be interested in that what is your experience in investment banking i'm just giving you an example if you are giving an introduction and you are applying for masters in design right and you uh you talk about you know this is my education but other than this this is also something that i have done okay so you talk about that so keep your introduction short and sweet and then ask the panel member if there is anything else they can they would like you to deep dive on or or uh, provide more details on okay and the the last thing i would say that during introduction is also very good opportunity for an interviewee to guide the interview in the direction he or she wants okay so for example you may have a very strong area okay you may be very strong in either your subject or say in some um some design aspect or or something right that you believe that you are very strong in 
when you are introducing yourself right if if i am going to introduce myself i would talk about i i mean not not to you guys because you know this was a different introduction but say it's a professional setting and i'm i'm meeting a ceo of an organization right i would talk about you know in my professional career i have worked on multiple mergers and acquisition deals and i have worked with the um it functional teams and the cios and you know i have helped them um manage their application and first infrastructure stack something like that so that it gives them openings multiple openings what someone can ask into okay and i am very confident about this subject so i i have already steered the conversation in this direction okay so sometimes your introduction you can you can start talking about that this is the subject you know in my college or in my graduation i was fascinated by um, design and i have done uh, i have done this and during this i have done my internship in this rural area of india and i was very fascinated something like that right you already gave them a story where they can ask you questions okay okay so i'll take a pause again i'll take a pause here this was all about introduction any questions so nikita what kind of intro you would not like or would not find interesting okay um so an introduction which is not relevant okay so for example you are going for um or or, or let me take my example because i can relate more easily to that okay i am interviewing someone for a consultant role in mergers in in mna team in my team okay and that person uh talks about the the education his his or her educational background right when i am more interested in what you have done in last three years okay i would be if if you start talking about i i did this in engineering or whatever it is it is immaterial now right i am not i am not going to hire you because you did that or say if you are talking about i am very i am a national level athlete it is fine great it is a great thing but you cannot give a one minute lecture on that that i have done this and i have done that and i was in school i was you know president of my school club it's irrelevant of what i am looking for okay so if there are things which are irrelevant to the discussion you can touch upon it but don't kind of give too much weightage and importance to that if that makes sense okay okay any other question so uh, so like mbs is a program which is like very much based upon the research part so like i have done a uh, bachelor's in fashion part fashion designing and then i have a bit of experience and not very concrete one because of the corona and pandemic and everything so like i am like how should i give the introduction like combine go on things and like show me so 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 dharini see um it is it is not expected that any of you know everything about you know what topic you are going to study otherwise why why will you study right what i would be interested in to know is that you are interested in it okay and you have made some effort towards it so i i want to make you have to show that what you have studied right you are good at that if you have done your economics your your social sciences you know you you say that you know i i have this is very interesting and i have done these things over the years i found that my passion lies in this field for that i have been doing this obviously there are multiple other things that needs to be done but i think that through the course that i have applied this is the right path and you know this is this is why i have just give the reason why you have applied to the course and what have you done in that direction nobody expects that you will be you have already you know you are a great designer and Uh, it is not act, uh, expected and and god of feel free to add uh, if you have anything to add here so so like different type of experiences will work like if we yeah. tell them like different types of like different internships and different uh, yeah it, it, it should work god of you you're on mute it shouldn't be connect sorry is my voice connect yeah yeah god of we can hear you so 
darini so if you if your grad, graduation is in fashion design so i think they might be interested in knowing about the final graduation collection that you made like what was the concept and what kind of uh, like were you more interested in menswear or uh, working with art artisans or like what was your interest when you graduated like what is it that you uh, basically took with you so talk about the collections that you love doing i mean was there a particular subject that fascinated you so it's not just that okay i have done fashion design now i want to do uh, mbs just because i didn't get a good job this is not a good answer no so just i mean ki like uh, my experience like very different like some some costume design some with design or like different type of so like it will help with that like they will ask no no why design you should have explore more in that or like something like that i didn't get it uh, could you just come again ah uh, yes sir sir like i have a uh, different kind of experiences like internship in something and then i have tried some freelancing in costume then some in graphics so like they would be asking that why masters in design which is very a research part like you should have explored more in that so like how to give that particular specific answer like for all these questions so uh, do you directly come up with a costume Uh, no sir sir so there is a proper thorough research there is a proper design uh, process that you follow which starts with empathy right and then the last part is like prototype and then feedback but uh, have you uh, decided what major uh, subject do you want to take this reason like not i want to explore more and okay that's okay so any course in design will follow the same design process that is why you have a common foundation here okay so that will help you because you want to stay in the field of design but now you want to pursue masters because you, there is something specific that you are looking for now it is not just fashion design so i think your goal should be clear in order to talk about it because they have experience design they also offer space design but space design is somewhat related to interior design or architecture yes. i i i would i would yeah. add one yeah yes, I, i would add one thing um, see uh, i'm sure that all of you have your own uh, distinctive and unique stories right your your life journey so far um I, i will tell you one thing that i have seen you know obviously i am i'm kind of much ahead of you in terms of you know the life span and the the experiences that i have seen different people your passion your your interest it keeps on evolving okay so just because you have done something in the past is not an hindrance not a hindrance to what you can do in the future okay you you if, if you are on a path and you are changing the track you just need to make sure that you are you you are clear about it first of all okay you should not be dilly dallying on that that okay i can do this but you know if i am not getting into mdes then i would do um whatever you know something very unrelated okay you you need to just say that okay i i have been doing this over the past whatever years of my life now over past one one and a half years i have started developing this new passion my thinking is evolving my my learning is evolving okay no you know it is not expected that we figure out what our lives will be at the age of 20 25 okay it keeps on keeps on evolving so that's for everyone i i won't be able to answer each of your question that you know what is your particular story but i can certainly say that some of you decide very early in life right that this is what i want and this is mdes is what i the course that i want some of you may have gone into multiple directions and your trajectory finally getting is is getting you here which is fine don't don't worry about it okay okay any other question uh, manya i think wants to good evening so i just wanted to know when i am giving my introduction i want my personality to shine through and as you said we want to kind of like have 
the panel be uh, interested in what we're saying and engaged so mm-hmm. where do we kind of draw the line in between being like giving an interesting sort of engaging introduction while also being professional so it doesn't get too casual but your personality still comes across like where do you think would it be a little unprofessional as a panelist if you're listening to a conversation but and where do you think you're still letting sure. like you're interested yeah sure so i'll i'll tell you generally what i find um when i'm doing an introduction right i i would like to follow a certain structure okay it can be um you know um sequential that you start with your with, with your school with your college or or you know with with your upbringing that i am born and brought up in delhi and you know my parents are this and i have done my schooling from here after that i did this so there is a flow to this okay um what it what this does this flow is that it it gives a structure okay so that there your question over around professionalism it kind of covers that when you are talking about it right your your interesting aspects of your life right so when i was in 12th i started pursuing um whatever bollywood dancing i'm just giving you that maybe this is a very interesting aspect of my life right i i fell in love with uh, movie making and with that i have you know i have i have pursued this um obviously i think all of you you know the mds itself you know you're getting into designing it's a creative field so you need to you need to um show light on your creative aspect i would say that i don't think um you know if if someone was interviewing with me uh, it is a more professional consulting kind of a background it is more i i would like to see that that person is um you know talks more about uh what kind of projects what kind of clients but when you are doing when, when you are going for an mds i think it's it's fair game that you you call out your interest okay and i i can't imagine that it would go very kind of off the path and uh, i i can't think of that see see you, you need to if you start talking about say i'm just giving example bollywood dancing right and you say five or six lines around that that i have i'm part of this group i am doing this in the evenings and i am you know pursuing this you see that you know if if your panelists are engaged or they are saying that yeah got it right you 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 have to read their body language as well okay so i hope that helps yes but one thing is that try to try to structure your introduction as well don't haphazardly start talking about that okay i am i'm here for my mds studies and uh, you know in past i have done some some other studies and i'm interested interested in that it kind of does not flow okay so have some flow to your introduction thank you okay yeah uh, so uh, so some of them have applied for masters in fashion management also okay uh, i think three or four students are for masters in design got it any other question guys so for masters in fashion management do they expect that you know a little bit about finance and um commerce and kind of business i mean most of them are from du and they have done bcom honors or economics honors or okay a bba so okay no that is that is that is fine um i think whatever see when i'm so so here here is a magic rule that we all follow in profit okay i cannot there it is not possible to find the perfect candidate the perfect candidate by that i mean that okay this guy i would take him or her and this guy would would start performing on day one i think similar thing applies even when you are selecting um students for for a course it is not that you will get the perfect student that okay this is she has done x y z and you know just get it and she would be a top performer it won't happen right there are some basic attributes that we are looking for and one of that attribute is that whatever studies whatever you have done in life how sincere were you okay so if you have done in your graduation in any subject if you have done say in geology geology right if i ask you a question on geology are you confident do you understand your subject that is important okay 
Okay. Um, any other questions? Okay. Okay. So I covered introduction. One thing I would add is, um, which is very important for me is your enthusiasm and your energy. Okay. And it kinds of, it, it kind of is very easy to pick. It is not very difficult. Okay. There are candidates, trust me, there are candidates who are very solid, who probably were the topper of their batch of their class in their MBA or in, you know, and we wouldn't take them because we, we are like, we, we are having difficulty talking to this person. How can this person go and talk to a client? Maybe this person is good for say research work. Okay. Backend research is good. But if, if I want someone who, who engages, you know, that there is in consulting, we say there is a test. So you need to think that you are on a long 12 hour flight with this person, will you be comfortable this, or for, to have this person as, you know, sitting next to you? Would you like that? If the answer is yes, you select that person. If the answer is no, you, you don't, okay? So keep that in mind that, you know, what kind of vibe are you? You have to be energetic. You have to show that you are, you are excited about this, okay? I know sometimes, Trust me, I mean, we have taken interviews in, cam in campuses when the interview is happening at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., bad times, right? You're, you're, you're half, sleep, half sleepy, but you still have to show that energy. Okay. Okay, so I think I covered introduction. Now coming to your kind of main section, main body of the interview, okay? A um, couple of things that I have seen is listen carefully and answer okay i have seen that there are candidates who so so listening abilities are very important okay in an interview and and you need to understand what the question is before you start answering and you can take a pause okay it is not that as soon as i finish i finish my question you start blabbering something i i i, I you can you can take a Take five seconds, 10 seconds, gather your thoughts, okay? Sometimes um, the candidate can say that, let me structure my thoughts, okay? I, I know, I mean, that's, that's extreme, but you, if, if the question is asked that, what is your name? You don't have to start from your college name that I am studying here, okay? You, you, you get the drift, right? What I'm trying to say, that if I'm asking you a very particular question, the question can be an open-ended question and a close-ended question. A close-ended question could be that, are you only applying to MDES or are you also applying to some other course? The answer has to be kind of a yes or no kind of a thing, right? It cannot be that, sir, I'm also looking at some foreign university. I'm like, I never asked that, right? So listen to the question carefully. So that is one. So answer to the question. Um, second thing I would say, ask clarifying questions. Okay. If some, if, if, if a question is asked, okay. Um, and it is not clear to you what, what is the question, then don't assume that, okay, you know, this may be, this is what this person is asking. Let me start answering. This just tells you that you are not confident. Okay. You need to be very confident that, okay, you know, I am, I am here. Um, I am, don't always feel, so, so one thing is very important, okay, is that when you are in an interview room, there is, it is not that an interviewer is sitting at a higher pedestal and you are somehow, you know, you are lower and, you know, they are lagging you. It is not that. It is kind of, you know, you, you have to treat yourself as equals, okay? You are, you are giving an interview, they are taking an interview, okay? Both of you are doing the, your own jobs. So you can ask clarifying questions. Be confident about that. Okay, sir, this is sir and ma'am or whatever. You know, I am not very clear. Uh, can you please repeat this question or or say it in another way? That uh, let me let me rephrase the question that you ask. Are you asking me that uh, wh why am I interested in this course? Uh, they will say yes. This is what I am asking. Okay, sir. Then you know, let me answer. Let me try to answer it. Uh, let me start answering so make sure that the question is clear okay 
another thing i would say which i like when i am talking to say my seniors and is answer in bullets or answer in points okay so so let me let me take an example okay um so what are your uh, what do you think uh, or or let me see. the question is how do you think the high inflation in india can be controlled okay that is a question so one way to answer is just start answering right the other way is i what i would do is i would take time i would say that um sir you know i have two things that i would i would like to talk on this point the first is this and the second is this so the so what happens is that it kind of give a structure right the the interviewer is now listening to you the interviewer is saying that okay she has two points he has two points the first point is this and now i am i am kind of tuned into that okay there is going to be a second point there is going to be a third point okay a b c d sir there are four things that i want to highlight a b c d okay 1 2 3 4 so when you when you kind of um bulletized or or make things in bullets points it is very easy to follow okay this is what is also called structured thinking okay when we are talking it should be structured okay so so now see I'll, i'll give you an example that when i started talking i told you that i am going to discuss this in three sections now you know that we are in the middle section there is a structure to it right you know that i am covering this and then i will be covering the closing section okay similarly whenever you are talking whenever you are answering try to give your answer in a in a structured way okay uh one last thing i would say is there would be there could be questions that you don't know answers to right what what do you do then okay a question is asked you don't have a clue about it okay you don't even have heard the name of it you you are going to do mdes and um and and probably god of can help you know some question is asked that that you don't understand you still need to show that you are not those kind of questions are thrown at you to see how you react to such situations okay how as a person how confident you are okay that is kind of a litmus test of that how confident you are okay the 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 way that i like people who um, you know who answer that question is accept that amit um this is this is something this is i'm i'm hearing this for the first time um i haven't heard this before um uh, is this you you if if you have some guess right is this related to um uh, to this side of fashion um if yes i can talk about it uh, or or if you can help me understand this term a little and i can give my point of view right so you have to you have to tackle it in a way where you are coming across that you know you are not threatened by that question you are not kind of um toppled or kind of you know you, you get shaky on that question okay okay so i think that is the main body of of interview i'll take a pause again and shoot your questions so i think uh, the main part is that you have to uh, act maturely plus i mean you don't have to get scared it is just a two way communication they just want to see if you will be able to uh, present a topic in class will you be able to work in groups will you be able to face interviews just after one and a half years because your last semester is your graduation project and again you will have to face a pi and most probably a gd also so i mean you will pay the fee it will be your decision if you want to take admission there they just want to be sure if this person knows what he or she is getting into because even nift has limited seats right they have 15 seats for general in delhi what if the student discontinues just after a month i mean they also want to have 
excellent alumni network. They want to have people who represent net. I mean, not just for glamour. Professors actually hate glamour. So MDS and MFM professors. They want to see if you will be uh, comfortable studying numbers. SPSS is a major subject. Okay, accounts is there, economics is there, stats. So you cannot skip those major subjects. So some people perceive this course as just you know talking about brands, shooting pictures, and you know making movies and styling and just putting a blog. No. So just relax and answer the question. I think this yeah. is the, where most of them lie. Don't be scared. There's nothing to be scared of. You can please uh, go ahead with your questions. Um, sir, hi. Uh, I have a question. So, like, uh, I want to pursue MFM, and my background is different. So, I've done economics honors, and then I'm working as a media. Uh, sorry, a media analyst in Wipro. So, if they ask the question like, why MFM? Like, why not MBA or anything which will help you in your, you know, uh, same graduation uh, aspect? So, how do you answer that? Like, uh, they won't get it as like I am bluffing or anything. So, Shubhangi, let me and and Gaurav, I'll obviously let you answer that. But Shubhangi, let me ask you, why MFM? Why and and just just tell me in plain simple words like why, um, why? And, and there has to be some reason, like whatever we do in life, there is some things, there is some reason to it, right? It may be that I want to study in the best organization. It may be that, you know, there is a good uh, job prospect after this. It may be that, you know, um, my life is settled, whatever, there must be something. So, so try to find that, you know, because it will come naturally. Okay. It, 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 is, it cannot be that Gaurav or I or any, anybody can give you an answer that why am I, am I Okay, because for each of you, that answer will be different. Okay, you have to, I'm sure that all of you will have some reason of doing this. Otherwise, there are multiple other things that you can do in life. If you are pursuing this, it may be just because, you know, this is one of the best master's program in the country and I want to pursue it. Okay, I, I am interested in this field and I want to uh, be trained by the best. Okay. I, I want to, once I pass out, I want to get into a firm or, or you know, the, um, the job prospects are amazing at this organization, which is fine, which is fair. Just be truthful and be honest, okay? And Gaurav, feel free, I mean, feel free to, to chime in. Uh, I think the answer is 100% correct that you have to have a reason. If you have not gone through the subjects and the kind of profiles that you'll be offered after you finish this course, then I think there is a problem with the decision also. And if someone is risking it, so even they would understand if a person has a stable job today and the person is quitting the, quitting the job just to pursue masters. So your salary might be just what, 25 to 30,000 a month after your PG. So this is your decision. I mean, do you really want to do it? And why not graphic design? Why masters in fashion management? Why not MBA? So there must be a reason why you have applied to them. There are other design colleges also. And ID also offers design for retail experience or strategic design management. So there must be a reason. I think you should introspect and write it down. Thank you, and, and that is that is when this it will come naturally. Otherwise, you will get tangled in your own answer. Okay. Yes, okay. Any other question? Guys, please go ahead and ask. Yeah, feel free. Even if if the question is related to your personal story, it is fine. Ask it. It may help others as well. Okay. So there is a question that some students uh, ask okay. so on behalf of those, I'll just uh, put it. So what if we want to switch to Hindi to answer mm -hmm. a specific question? 
during my interview so so my my advice is that you in in terms of language you take your cue from the interview interviewers okay so if i am the interviewer okay and i start talking in hindi ki acha batao abhi you know kya kar rahe ho aaj you can be comfortable and you can mix hindi and english okay but the interviewer is only talking in english right then you giving answer in english and hindi or just hindi is kind of gives does not give the right signal i would say this okay so that is one thing where i think you have to take cue from the interviewer also i i would actually take cue if the interviewer is actually talking in hindi i i want my kind of interviewee to start talking in hindi or or say a few words or or whatever your mother tongue is if, if say you are a marathi right and uh, the interview is a marathi they they may just ask you that you know whatever in marathi something right so so but in that regards don't my my suggestion is that the official language is english for any such interview okay try to stick to that as much as you can okay unless you are getting a signal or a cue from the interview Thank you. and don't mix and and the other thing i would say is that even if you speak slowly right i mean obviously english is not our first language right so we we all have our own ways of speaking english you know all of us are not the most fluent in english which is fine okay but don't start using filler words don't start using theek hai acha uh you know those kind of what happens is that those are uh, i would say those are noises okay when you are talking in english and you start hearing these words it just gives that entire thing a little unprofessional feel so so my advice will be avoid it thank you any other question guys no so i think we okay. can okay so so i would now come to the last part okay which is how do you close okay end an interview uh so generally in in corporate interviews we the interviewer will ask that do you have a question for us okay i am not sure if it happens in in your management or or in your college admission interviews but it may okay so first thing is that you should have done some research and you should have some questions or or that you know some clarification question what what it tells that you are actually interested so for example if i am doing mdes okay so you can ask a question that you know um how is how has you know the prospect of mdes changed over the years what are you seeing um you know um, how is the alums whatever questions you may have you should have some of something prepared that you can ask don't don't be silent when that question is asked okay do you have any questions for us don't don't be silent and don't say that no sir i don't have any question it just shows that you know what i was never interested i just came here for for the sake of it i have not done any research so please leave me and i i want to go okay that is the vibe that i get okay so till the interview is over be interested and show your your willingness and and your enthusiasm okay um other than that i think um i i just just make sure that if there was any open item you are closing it out um you are uh, i i am thinking for from a college perspective there is nothing else it, there is it, it is not that there is going to be another round right otherwise you would have asked that uh, what is next for me but i think this is it so um you can you can just close the interview thank the thank the interviewers okay because they took time so tell them that thank you for taking out time and you know spending that time with me it was also a great learning for them because all each of the interviews also a learning experience okay 
Um, so it, it was great learning from you, you know, some of the points that you mentioned. Um, so, so close there. Okay, so any any questions? So now now I'll open up for a, a, any question at all on all the three topics or areas I covered. Feel free. Nice, come on. Hi, good evening. So I just wanted to ask. You said you could you can ask questions, and obviously you've done your research. But are there any wrong questions to ask, which you think? I mean, obviously, some questions so, can get a little weird. So I, I would, that, 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 that's a very good point, Anya. I, I would, that actually kind of reminds me of something that I missed, okay? Uh, not wrong questions, but I would say that there are some wrong things to say in an interview, okay? You should try to avoid any political discourse, any political discussions, okay? I am not aware. I like this party, I like this leader or, or things like that, okay? There should not, you should not talk about religion. You should not talk about um, anything which, which shows kind of biasness in you, okay? Um, that you know, this, is, uh, this is what I believe. It, um, you should come across as a very balanced person, okay? Any such views, which are very strong. You may have, all of us have some strong views on something, okay? Um, say, say Russia, Ukraine, right? We, we may have some strong view that, you know, whatever Indian government is doing is absolutely wrong. We are not on the right side of, of history, things like that. But um, try to balance it out in a way that you are not projecting a lot of your political religious, uh, caste, any of those kind of views during interview, okay? So keep that in mind. Now, coming back to Manya, your question is, any anything wrong to ask is personal questions, okay, to an interviewer. So personal questions, so a lot of people have asked me that, you know, Amit, you have been in consulting for 10 years, you know, what, what is your, your kind of experience, which is perfect question, which is a very good question, right? But it, it should not be that um, something like, uh, ma'am, though, though you are, um, you know, um, some, something which is kind of gets into more personal terrain, okay? Um, how did you manage this with your personal life? Something which is, which is not called for. So don't ask, don't get into personal space of the interviewer, okay? Thank you. Also, just to add to that, would it be a good idea to ask for feedback? Like, do you think there's something I could improve on or something that I um, can work on? I, I, I don't think so. And, and Gaurav, you, you can chime in here. I think because the interview is, um, that is for practice session, not for your final. Okay. For your finals, it is, it is you know, you, you gave your performance and you will get to know the result. Um, you know, it, it, I, I, I don't like that question. I have seen, you know, folks who have asked me question. My personal view is that um, this was not a practice session, okay? This was, I, I interviewed you and I would give my feedback to the HR or something, right? Um, don't expect that I'm teaching you here. So so my view is that. But God of feel free, I mean, what, what do you- what I think you this do? is absolutely correct. I mean, this would be a blunder to ask that. Yeah, no, I asked this question because I've heard it from a couple of places. Uh, I mean, on the internet, that this is a good question to ask. But yeah, don't read that. Don't read that. No, no, I love asking. Yeah. But I got it. Thank you. See, NIFT has recently launched a Panchkula Center. So maybe there is a state where uh, there is not even a single center. Or probably uh, they don't have a course in interior design. You know, so except interior design, they, they have other courses also. Plus, are, are the placements centralized? Because they will give you a question. Uh, for example, which is your preferred NIF center and why? So would you be comfortable in studying? So a simple question could be, do you know where is Kanur? 
because nift has a campus in kannur so most of them don't even know where is kannur so you should at least know the names of the centers so questions can come up so this go through the prospectus or read the history and everything they 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 have a spectrum they have a craft mela going on they have new initiatives coming up so even vision next project so they are even hiring uh, commerce graduates for that so i think you can talk about the initiatives social initiatives i mean but certainly not Uh, ask for the, uh, for the feedback. Yeah. Okay. I know we are we are coming on top of the hour. So, any any other question you have? Um. Yeah. So, sir, uh, you said that if uh, we don't know the uh, answer of a certain question, and then we need to frame it like you know, just uh, don't say directly no. What if uh, if even if we frame, but we like do not know anything about it, and just to just to uh uh. if the interviewer wants to throw us off that how do you not know have you not done your research or something kind of that uh, as a cheat so how do you come uh, with an answer um i think see so so um it it um, there 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 could be a question which which you don't have or or a term which you have not heard of okay and it is it is it is fine to say that i'm sorry i haven't heard it okay now if the interview is saying that how how come you haven't heard it, heard this thing i think it is honestly it is 1% chance that any anybody would do that any interviewer any any good interview would do, do that but if that happens just say that um during my studies i have not come across this and this um you know um uh, this is probably not my area of interest if you let me know what it is i'll try to um, get more educated about it that's it yeah. um, you, you you can't you can't help it right i mean yeah for example if you don't know what is xr so if the person just mentions that um, so okay so we are talking about the virtual world so what is xr in case i don't know so as uh, mr said you may ask for a clarification even if you don't know you can just say that okay uh, i ha- have not heard about it so i'll probably go back and i'll, I'll surely check it yeah but this it is fine you as, as yeah it, it is more about checking your confidence right like like making making sure that there will be there will be in your life in your work environment there will be points where you won't know what the question is asked right but you you just need to show that you you are comfortable um, in those situations but uh, i mean suppose the question is what is the name of the vice president of india then no you will have to say sorry so there was a student two years back so in her introduction she mentioned the term marketing eight times okay so my simple question was okay tell me the four p's of marketing now she attracted that question yeah right so if you are so passionate so i was the head of the marketing club i studied this and now i am interested in let's say uh, social media marketing and also please expect questions to be asked from that particular term or the field yeah, and and that is that is what i mean that, that you can move the interview in the direction you want to okay you can like like gorav said that if you if you are so confident about marketing if you talk about marketing eight times the interview will ask question on marketing okay but then make sure that you know that also for shubhangi i think they would be interested in knowing your profile like who is a media analyst i mean what was your role i mean if there was a challenge uh, at your workplace and how did you overcome so things like that and uh, why do you want to quit your job as a media analyst now so i think you should work on that first right yes sir thank you any other question yes mr khan 
So as you said, you, we shouldn't say anything political. Um, but if the if they ask us, like, what is your stance on Ukraine and Russian situation? So what should we answer? See, your your stance that is that is a fair question, and you can say that I believe that. um you know uh, a war shouldn't have happened and you know this is whatever whatever your stance is okay what what i am trying to say is that you should not get into kind of um the the muddy waters okay which is like you know what what modi government is doing is not right and i i i wish you know there was another government and um then then it kind of gets into you know the, that rat hole okay so yes. so you can obviously you can always say your point of view your point of view is fair you should have a point of view i ideally okay you should have a point of view that as a person i think that this is uh, we should not we should never have a war and uh, which is fine uh, you know putin does not agree with my point of view is a very different thing okay but i i believe in this so which is which is fine it is just that try to steer away from things which are like uh, i don't know why imran khan is doing this and just just too much politics okay it's not yeah. no, nobody is interested like for for your studies and all um, you know nobody should ask those questions first of all and you should not try to get into that that that, that area yes sir. thank you yeah uh, next question Kajal, any question? Disha, Jayesh. Akarshi, Shivangi. Nan, Akanksha, Ashita. Okay, so I have a question. Yeah. So. Was you guys will later ask the same question again. So, what if they ask them uh, about the backup plan? What if you don't make it to NEF this year? Then, what is your backup? So, Disha, can you answer this question? Uh, yes, sir. You're talking about me, no? Or me? Yeah, Disha Gupta can go ahead. Yeah, so basically, sir, uh, like I would say, like uh, firstly, I would try my best to get into this college. My first priority is this. Later, uh, I would also prefer trying for this college again, maybe, uh, maybe next year. Okay. Because somehow I will show them that I'm really inclined towards this course and. uh like my undergrad in my undergraduate i have done fashion designing and later like i want to uh by interning at various places i have got to know a lot about marketing and management so that's how i have come up th through this and i want to be an entrepreneur further so that's the reason i'm more inclined towards mfm so moving forward towards same course i would uh, prefer applying for the same test uh, like even if i don't clear it's not about like if, uh, i would prefer basically uh, going for it next year also but but what 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 will you do for next one year maybe sir i would practice more i would gain more experience i would uh, uh, like i would research about this field in a better way and as fast as possible okay so so my my suggestion is that it is fine uh, it it will also depend on disha that how you how you um what is the way in which you answer this question okay how much enthusiastic you are okay um that okay you are so passionate about this that you only want to do it from there otherwise it may sound a little negative if you say that for next one year all i want to do is yeah. you know keep practicing and keep appearing next for the exam it because each year is precious right and and yeah um, so the, the the other answer or the other way to look at it is ki okay you know what i am interested in this course okay nift is my first option but it is not my life okay my life there, there are other things there are other schools there are other colleges you know if not nift i have something else if not something else 
i would not i'm not going to sit around i am going to pursue i would get into a job i would do my job okay so have you know have a plan b plan c just just tell exactly. tells the the interviewer that okay you are you are you're a confident person okay and you know this is we will be kind of uh, lucky to have you okay not that you are only dependent on us and it is fine it, even if we don't take her this year she will come back next year right so just make sure that you come across that okay you know i you you are you are lucky to have me okay they they should get that feeling yeah sure. plus i mean 99% students would say that okay i will prepare again and i'll i'll see you again next year and they know that they would not so i mean they have been doing this for years now if they ask you have you applied to some other college yes if you have so i so i would like to stay in delhi so other yeah. than left i only have pearl academy as my option if you have applied to pearl i think nikita has same question uh, after explaining them the answer to that they asked me about what if you don't get it i think nikita the same answer right that if i don't get it i do have a plan b okay i have applied to xyz colleges um and if if i don't get it i would pursue uh some job opportunities and with that i would continue preparing for this and probably you know try try it next year as this is the area that i want to get in okay so have have tell them that you are um that that you are not not only dependent on this course for your life this is not your complete life okay yeah because even for this question most of the students say that okay i am okay even with uh, nif shillong and also You, you can tell them that so this is a question just to know how you handle this question because at the end your rank will decide if you get delhi or bombay or uh, hydra so the order is delhi bombay bangalore hyderabad gandhinagar so they might ask you okay so can you live in chennai for the next two years will you be comfortable there or shillong or let's say shrinagar or panchkula you can say that these are the top five centers so i like interacted with uh, some nif graduates and th- this is the feedback that was uh, given to me about the placements actually so there is a problem with other centers or even the internships and gp and placements so there are issues so that is okay if you want to study in the top five centers so i think that is perfectly fine and if you actually can travel and you are willing to go ahead and i mean you can go ahead and say that okay so i have studied all my life in delhi and i think this is the opportunity to explore the other parts of the country so i think that would eventually help me to grow and learn interact with new people new culture okay okay any other question Man. Okay, I think I think we're good, Gaurav. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. For okay. Taking our time. No worries. Thank you. I I hope this was helpful, guys, and uh, all the very best for for your uh, exams. Okay. Thank you, sir. Good night. Thank, thank you, sir. Good, sir. Take care, guys. Thank you, sir. Thank you.